In today's episode we will make super realistic masking, paint it and fix it on the tank. In addition we will prepare figures, add details and mount everything on the base. Hello my friends, I'm Lucas and you are watching Coldemons PL. As you probably remember from previous episodes I have already done some initial masking using the cell ban. If someone hasn't seen it yet just find the links in the description. Many photos from the war show exactly how the Germans masked their vehicles due to the overwhelming advantage of the Allied air forces, but of course also for typical tactical reasons. Some vehicles are completely covered with branches, but some only to a minimum extent because the crews didn't do it diligently enough or the combat conditions resulted in the loss of some camouflage during the fight. Anyway, it's a characteristic element that it's quite difficult to reproduce in 35th scale. So, today we are going to make the model masking with photo edged branches. In the past I have seen many attempts to copy idea from photos but the results were really poor. The use of materials that work well for foliage on dioramas doesn't necessarily work on the model. You need to keep a certain level of detail and therefore the only solution are photo edge sets. Of course you can still try with laser cut plants but I haven't used them for this purpose. It seems to me that the amount of work compared to the PE would be much more and also the price, considering the amount we need, would also be high. As you have already seen I use the Edward kits for my Panther. They are very good, you can find a lot of leaves from different trees in their offer. I decided to put three types on my model. First the smallest acacia leaves, but here they will imitate rowan berry leaves because they are very similar. Next hazel branches which are bigger and maple leaves which are the most numerous. In numbers I have one row one and one hazel sets and four maple ones. It seems like a lot but if you want to make a good effect it will be almost perfect. I would even add a little more but I leave that to you for your assessment. As you can see all the work with these elements consists in cutting them out of the frames, which takes quite a long time. It's very easy to leave a connection somewhere that will have to be cut off at the later stage. This has happened to me more than once in the past and here too I had to do it in several places. After cutting the branches you need to properly shape them. I initially tested kneading the leaves with a saw handle and then corrected it by bending individual leaves with tweezers. After a few tests I decided to do it only with tweezers and not wasting time pressing them with the handle. This is the most time consuming activity. I don't even want to know how many leaves are there but I can say that there are hundreds of them and almost each one was bent to a greater or lesser extent. Generally it's quite a tedious job but necessary because it gives the right shape to our elements. The PE sets apart from the whole branches also contain single leaves that can be stuck on. It's quite a long process but it's worth doing. As you may have noticed some large branches have been cut into smaller pieces and glued together. Thanks to this I got a more natural look. Of course it's best to do this by using super glue and bending the tips of the branches into small U's so that they stick to each other better. 
Of course you can also solder these elements, but I haven't tried. And just like larger branches we also glue single leaves. It will definitely give an even better effect. The most important thing is that these elements stick to each other tightly because it's very easy to damage them while laying on the model if the joint is weak. Such a ready-made branch can be freely bent, giving it a natural shape. It all depends on our needs and the model on which it will be attached. At this point I would like to mention my patrons because it's perfect time to say thank you very much for your support and that you joined the Coldemons PL team. You are my heroes. If you also want to be my patron, check what benefits you can have when you support me. You can find the link in the description and at the end of this video. Don't waste your time and join the team. Consider subscribing to the channel and clicking a thumb up below this video because thanks to this my films will appear regularly in your proposals and besides this material will be much better at YouTube algorithms. So I'm counting on you my friends that you help me make my channel even more popular with modelers all over the world. In order to mask the joining points of the individual branches and to thicken the metal and make them look more natural, I applied PVA glue on them. After drying it does the job and masks the joints and also thickens these elements. It's worth doing it because it adds realism and reduces their flat appearance which will undoubtedly be visible. After the glue is completely dry, the elements for painting can be prepared. And here comes the question. How to apply a metal primer in such a complex structure as these parts are? I let go of this step and applied the AK foundation directly from the can. The most important thing to do is not to flood the leaves too much with the primer. Two thin layers should cover all surfaces. After drying you can start painting. Of course there is no other option than an airbrush. 
and of course you can do it with a brush but it will take a few days and the effect won't be as good as it should be. The first color is plain green XF5 as a color base for subsequent highlights. I decided that it would be the color of the shadow, that is, it will stay on the bottom of the leaves and on those hidden deeper. The second layer was lightening by adding XF4 and applying this color more generally without going into the nooks and crannies. Already at this stage it looked pretty good, but from experience I know that you need to lighten the leaves even more to make it look good on the model. That's why I added X8 to what I had in the airbrush and sprayed the leaves the same way. I didn't care that it was a glossy color because I planned to cover it with matte varnish anyway. Ok, the leaves are ready, now the branches need to be painted. As you know, children paint trees brown, but it has nothing to do with the reality where trunks and branches are green-grey. Bronze is just an additional tone, therefore I mixed grey with a brown and painted the main branches. The closer to the leaves, the less color I applied. I used a different mixture of paints on different branches to diversify them a bit. As a result, we have ready-made elements that can be placed on the model. Someone may ask why I didn't wash leaves and branches. The answer is simple. First of all, they would darken the colors of leaves and I skipped this step because I wanted to have a contrast. About contrast on the entire stand, I will say a few words about it later. Secondly, it would take a long time and the effect wouldn't meet my expectations. Yes, I know I'm lazy, but in this case I based on my experience from previous models I have done with the foliage. Of course you can try. Your model, your decision. Good luck!
Well, we have three branches of hazel, five branches of rowan and twelve branches of maple in various sizes. Now I have to arrange it on the model. It's very important to build an appropriate three-dimensional effect with them. These parts have a tendency and as a humans we tend to flatten these parts, making them look bad in some places. Of course you have to remember the fact that the leaves fall down, but it's worth working more carefully on an appropriate arrangement when we already have individual branches glued to the model and we can freely use the tools to displace their appearance. Of course you also need to remember to leave open spaces in the field of view of the driver or the machine gunner. For me it's the best to attach the branches to the model with super glue. Of course it's best to know in advance where they are supposed to be. I tested the arrangement of the branches without glue and then I took them off and glued them one by one. This way we can arrange them quite quickly as planned. And now I'm switching off all my talk because it's time for a drink and something good to eat. Chill out for a while. Alright, I'm back. Finally, after completing this stage, all the photo etchings I added were covered with matte varnish to eliminate the flash effect caused by yellow paint which I applied earlier as a highlight. A moment of relaxation with my son. Several times I heard the opinion that young people aren't keen on modeling and it's a hobby for old guys. Well, I think the best way is to show how fun it can be. Such building together is a small step towards the fact that in the future a young man could reach for models and try his hand at them. And here building an RC model and going crazy in the backyard is the best fun. And to be clear, I didn't make this model, we made it together.
Let's focus on the figures. Rado Miniatures has released a set that is perfect for my scene. And what's more, I copied the title. You can watch the entire review of this set in the link at the top or you can also find it in the description of the movie. We start with the appropriate preparation of each figure. You need to cut the casting blocks and sand the places here and there. The matching of individual elements is very good and you can clearly see how it looks like. I change the position of the rifle for the figure with grenade and add straps to the weapons in both figures. In some places I covered small defects with green stuff. I drilled holes for toothpicks in the shoes to make it easier to hold the figures while painting. Before I put the primer on I thoroughly cleaned them from resin dust. And of course I checked how they will look on the stand with the model. After applying the primer I started painting. Please remember that I am not a specialist in figure painting and I consider that I do it at a sufficient level to enrich my models with them. I wouldn't definitely start with a single figure in the competition in the figures category. And one thing more. I apologize in advance for the out of focus images at some points. Next time I will try to do it better. I started painting by coloring the skin. Here I am going to show both figures alternately because in fact I painted them this way. A bit one, a bit the other. In total I used three colors to paint faces and hands. Lips, eyes, hair are all additional colors but all of them came from the AK skin painting kit. I have mentioned about contrast and now it's best to see what I mean. First the vehicle in a typical forest disguise is in the city. It's not so unique but Panther looks like a guest in the civilization. Secondly Juicy Green will be at a different light level than a dusty vehicle which is clearly visible when looking at the model from the distance. Thirdly the figures are quite clean compared to the vehicle which is dirty. Thanks to this they stand out better against its background. And all of this gives an interesting effect that attracts the eye. Of course all the elements of this project have a task, starting with the model and ending with the teddy bear and parachute. But thanks to the contrast the perception of the whole scene is even sharper and this causes more interest and discussion. Everything I've just said will be clearer in a moment when all parts come together. And that's all of my theory. If you have some thoughts about this let me know in the comments. When the faces were ready I started painting the smokes in the typical SS camo. I used Calvin Tan's book on painting uniforms mentioned earlier in the episode about the Zeldbahn. Thanks to this it was easier to choose the right colors and apply the right painting order. Of course I supported myself with photos from the internet which are very helpful whenever I paint figures. Painting the camo is contrary to appearances very pleasant and as we know what to do you can deal with it really quickly. In the case of a figure with a grenade I decided to use one color pants in a typical German color which was felt grey. Black shoes also didn't cause any problem.
I painted the second figure in a similar way, but here I painted the pants in an Italian camouflage, typical for the unit from which both soldiers come. It's very simple camo and fun to paint. I equipped both figures with archer decals with SS insignia and ranks. Of course both originally have them cast in resin, but I always change them to stickers, so I did the same here. After applying I treated them with a softening liquid to make them stick to the surface better. Finally, I sprayed both figures with matte varnish. Now they had to be placed on the stand and adjusted to the model to make them look natural in their poses. Once that was done I drilled small holes for the pins on which I placed both figures. Such protection is necessary at the same time it's certain that the figures won't fall off the base. I did the same with the Panther but in a slightly larger version. I drilled a hole in the floor of the vehicle and the same in the cobblestones. A long screw held the model in place. Of course when someone looks under the model it will be visible, but if I have to choose between safety and appearance in the almost invisible place, then I choose safety. It's clear. A few last touches to correct this and that on the model and a few small traces of tracks on the stones a bit of dust for the shoes of the figures and I can say that it's done. Before you turn off this video, thank you for the time you spent with me. For the end a few shots of the entire project because I hope that you want to see how does Panther look with soldiers during street fights somewhere in France in 1944. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!